There is nothing outside of you that's gonna give you the answers that you seek to your healing, nothing. You will spend your entire life searching up, down, left, right for the reasons as to why things feel the way that they do. And I'll tell you, I'm gonna give y'all a shortcut. Go inside first. Peace family, welcome back to our final episode of the season. This is A Moment with Zen. I am Zen and I am so excited today just in one, in allowing the divine to completely guide this episode as stated as it's the final one, um, just as a culmination of all of the communions that we have had prior to this one and in really um, feeling and affirming and confirming that this episode is going to propel us forth into just greater abundance into greater knowledge wisdom deeper learning deeper knowledge of self deeper acceptance of self and deeper surrender so today we're gonna start with just a couple of breaths just to get us all wherever you are in the world watching us watching this and whenever you're watching this but just to get us all grounded here in the collective energy so taking a deep breath in the nose hold it Release out of the mouth. Taking another deep breath in through the nose. Releasing out the mouth. And on our final breath, we are going to just allow the vibration to melt away whatever it is that you're carrying whatever is on the shoulders when the shoulders and the neck get too tight that means you're carrying entirely too much so in this moment in this space you don't have to do anything except for be here right now in presence with me in presence with the divine and in presence with self so in this last one as you take in the tones just take another deep breath and cue your body to melt into relaxation. amazing I trust that we're all here now that we're all present whatever it was that happened in your day okay I'm looking like we all right we all right okay <laughs> nose itch I trust that we're all here now that we're all present Whatever it was that happened in your day, in your week, whatever that is that needs to just melt away from your mind, you don't need to think about it. <laughs> Allow it to just flow. You can even imagine water, imagining yourself floating in a pool of water on your back and whatever that is that needs to leave your energetic field so that you can be at peace just in this moment, allow it to melt. So, now that we are here, now that we are present, I invite you to take both hands and just place them over the heart space. And as the hands are over the heart space, just taking a moment to really feel into self and feel into what aspects of self 
are not fully surrendered to your life experience. What is it within you that's speaking, that's resisting, we'll call it tension, whatever tension is inside of your experience. And as you put the hands over the heart, you may be able to start to feel tension in different parts of the body. Is it the knees, the shoulders, the neck, the back? Where are you holding tension? And with the acknowledgement of that, this shows you where the tension is in your life. So as the hands are over the heart, when you feel the tension, just ask yourself, what is this about? <laughs> what is this about? Where am I resisting? Because nobody can create tension in your experience but you. And understandable, there are things outside of you that will happen that may trigger tension in your experience, but nobody can create that feeling. Nobody has dominion and authority over your body, over your feelings, over your being, except for you. So we're gonna start there today with the tension that we create in our own experiences. With flowing into the creation of tension in our experiences, I wanted to share one of my own experiences from the past week. So once a month on Sundays, I host a community event in Atlanta called Inner Reset. And in that, it's a sound bath, it's a guided meditation. I call it that, but really it's me running my mouth and telling people da 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 da, -da. So really that's what's happening. But you know, we just allow, we allow the divine to come speak in. There are instruments and my apprentices come and they assist the people present with any energy that needs to be moved. We do Reiki healing, uh, all, all of this stuff. So considering typically there are about 25 people that come, there's so much energy in the space and you can truly, I can truly feel the energy as soon as, as soon as everyone steps in, it's like you feel the density. With those events, and this is something that I have had to learn to do, this is something that I teach my apprentices to do, with there being so much energy in the space and us deciding to come into the space and be vessels for people's healing, we open ourselves up to also receive dense energies as well. When you encounter a lower vibrational energy, especially through touch, especially through the hands, which are portals and energetic receptacles, when you encounter those energies, what can happen is an energy that's similar to yours, that a, a dense energy that someone else is carrying that's similar to yours, has a way of now seeing the commonality within the two of you and now attaching to your energetic field as well. So inside of our community event, we're doing the things, everything's great. We're working on the people. And when I go home, my home is my sanctuary. I, I love to host, but just at this phase of my life, I honestly don't like people walking in and out of my house because I, I need to keep the energy a certain way. Um, and my energy and my daughter's energy is enough. Both of us really are hermits <laughs> in a way. So we love a nice, peaceful feeling space. So I go home, I know how the energy of my home feels, but when I walk into my house, I'm like, mm, something's different. And I haven't cleansed myself yet from the event, so I cleanse, but now I start to hear negative thoughts coming into my mind. And the thoughts are speaking to me about me, but they are things that I've worked through eons and ages ago. And so I'm listening to the thoughts and I'm like, huh, it's interesting that you're there. <laughs> like, where did you come from? What's going on? But, you know, un understanding what can possibly happen when you're interacting with so many different energies. And what, so what happened was because I was still carrying self-doubt, because I was still carrying the energy of self-doubt and even just the tiniest bit, there could have been people that I touched in that event who were also carrying self-doubt, but because theirs was so much through touch, it came into my energetic field 
and attached to the doubt that I was already carrying. And so hence now, old thoughts, thoughts that I ain't thunk in a while, <laughs> now are trying, uh, now try to replay in my mind. And you know, this is me in awareness, right? Understanding what's happening, understanding, okay, you just need a deeper cleanse, seeing, okay, this doubt has something to attach to. And so now let's take another look at our own self-doubt. So I'm gonna take that back to, I'm gonna take that back to where we started, but really wanted to also deliver that to you all in understanding that when you're carrying certain energies, when you're carrying certain dense energies, fear, things of uh, fear, mistrust, betrayal, um, resentment, all of, all of the emotions that, uh, that go in that category, in that category, in the dense bag, we'll say the dense bag of emotions. So when you're carrying this dense bag of emotions, it makes you more sensitive to dense emotions that are not your own, <laughs> dense emotions, entities, energies that are not your own, that might be floating around in the environment that other people might be carrying. It opens you up to receiving those, receiving even more of that emotion. And similarly to what I experienced with even having that little bit of self-doubt within me, anyone that I touched in that room who may have been carrying heavy self-doubt, it latched onto mine and then called forth those, um, those old thoughts. I say this as to say, the deeper that you go into the observation, the realization, the healing, of your density. Really understanding this in connection with the phrase that we create our own reality. The more dense you feel inside, the more density is attracted to you <laughs> in that way. Y'all, you know, I gotta go in circles till I get it. <laughs> so I find the best way to say this. The more density that you carry, the more density is attracted to you. And so in a way, you become a magnet for density. And I wanted to use that example with my community event and doing the spiritual work because it truly just shows that if I was someone who carried not a shroud of doubt, not one, it doesn't matter who I touched and who I encountered that was carrying doubt, it would have nothing to latch onto. It would have none of my own stuff to now grab and start to try and speak to me about, and this is why, this is why I wanted to call it an entity, because truly that's what it is. I was like, get your ass out of my mind. <laughs> like, get out of my head. <laughs> um, it's like, ugh, it's like mosquitoes, a pest. Especially once you've already worked through the stuff and it's like, okay, you know, I, I know, I know, I know I'm working through it, go away, pestilence. Instead of uh, being like the, and, a lesser healed, I don't even like to say that, but this is the best way I can articulate, a lesser healed version of me would have heard those thoughts again and been like, oh man, where did you come from? I thought we've already done this work. And it's like, I know I've done the work. I know I've done it, but in understanding where I am and knowing that there are certain places where I still doubt. And so I left myself vulnerable and open to, to those energies now having something inside of me to latch on. And so that takes us back to no one can create tension inside of your experience, but you. Now, granted, there may be other energies and entities floating out there that don't belong to you, but if you address your own tension, if you take the time to really just dig deep into where am I feeling resistance in my body. That is one of the best ways to start for people who don't know how to become aware of what's happening with them inside of their experience. The body keeps the score. The body is going to tell you every single thing that's happening with you. So I'll give you, I'll give you all a couple of examples. If you're feeling tension in your feet, your ankles, your legs, your knees, this is a matter of an inability to move forward. We can look at the energetic body as something that speaks to us in very literal ways. Look at the body part. So the joints, the joints bend, the joints move. 
So if you're experiencing tension in your joints, life is showing you where you are not flexible, where you are not willing to bend, to flow. And again, where you're unwilling to move forward. If you if your knees is cracking, <laughs> if your knees are just crack a lack and if any part and y'all, this is my fingers just do that. Right. But any part of the body that cracks, this is a body trying to release tension. Um, specifically with children who like crack their knuckles and crack their neck, what they are unconsciously displaying is they're trying to release some of the tension that they're feeling inside of their experience. And so the hips, the hips are connected to creativity. The hips and the lower back, you're feeling tension there. Where aren't you allowing your creativity to flow through? They're also connected to feminine energy, finances, security, things of that nature. Um, thinking about the lower half of your body is connected so much more with our physical reality. So anything that's happening on the lower half is speaking to you about your sense of security in your physical self. It's speaking to you about your physical environment. If you're having gut issues, so I'm, I have encountered so many people that are like, yeah, I've been a doctor. I've been to the doctor about my stomach. I was talking to somebody the other day and they were saying they were going to the doctor about their stomach. And I asked them, what symptoms are you experiencing? Nausea, bloating, um, light stomach pain. And in my mind, of course, I'm like, why the hell are you going to the doctor about that? Like, well, you know, this is energetically me understanding anything that's happening in the gut. This is, especially when it gets to that point, this is speaking to you about your sense of self-worth, about your personal power. How am I allowing people to run over me? Think about um, our gut is our, they say it's the second brain, it's the first brain. This is your power center. So any problems that you're having with the gut, any tension that you're feeling in your stomach, especially people who just tend to like hold themselves like this, looking, look at the way that you tend to sit. If your body does this naturally, now you're covering your gut. You're protecting something. Look at where you place your hands. So your body will tell you exactly what's happening. And even if you don't know these things energetically, like I said, you can touch the body part and ask, what is happening here? <laughs> What's going on here? And so you start to notice where you're carrying the tension in your, in your body. This translates to the tension that you're carrying in your life. And then you take it one step further and ask yourself now, how am I attracting more of this tension? in my experience how am i calling these energies these lower vibrational entities how am i calling these things to me to attach and give me more of this so when you take the time to start to just get connected with what's going on in your body get connected with what's happening in your body connecting that with what's happening in your life and You'll start to have just a, a wider view, more perspective on how you are allowing these things to exist in your experience and how you are calling them to you. So I'll give another example because this is such a big one for so many people. Trust. The ability to trust others. Um, on one episode, I spoke about just my journey with self-trust and noticing the things that were happening around me. But... When you are carrying the energy of betrayal, you're carrying the density of I feel betrayed. I have been betrayed. What happens is an entity forms. It can be a baby entity. If it's 10 betrayals, it can turn into a big fat demon. You know, it just depends on, depends on the amount of energy that's being fed into it. But when you're carrying that energy, what happens is you start to attract other energies and entities that carry that same vibration. And they say, hey, we can attach to that one right there. So truthfully, they won't even notice if we go and use them as a host. They won't notice because the energy is already there. <laughs> so 
Uh, think about that with, with, all, with all of those emotions that you put in your dense bag. But now, what do we do about this? How do you start to empty the bag, lighten the load, shift the vibration? Uh, before, I, before, I, before I say this, y'all know what's so interesting? Um, prior to starting this episode, Spirit kept saying, the heart space, the heart space, the heart space. And I was like, what do you want me to do with the heart space? They were like, put your hands over your heart. Tell them to put their hands over their heart. And I'm like, okay, cool. So we did that, right? Okay, so now we're coming right back. How do we transmute this energy? How do we transmute the density? Love and forgiveness. <laughs> Love and forgiveness and, <laughs> and, and letting go, right? Now the question is, how do we do that? Easier said than done. Kind of, but not really. <laughs> Easier said than done is what people will say. But uh, in the transmutation of this energy, let's, let's take betrayal. How do we transmute this energy? First, understanding that some things are to be released. Some things are to be transmuted. How will you know the difference? <laughs> if you feel as if you are having to fight against an energy if this is part of you it's to be transmuted energy that is to be released often uh, it's not always easeful but there doesn't have to be this it's not this big fight involved about it you don't have to sit and argue with it and go back and forth and get out of me and uh, you don't necessarily have to do it on that level with some entity-esque energy yes but on um, on a deeper level these lower vibrational dense these emotions in our dense bag they are to be transmuted with the transmutation of this of these energies as i said love forgiveness letting go how do we do it the simplest way, the simplest thing that I can give y'all for this, and let me tell you, this is what has worked for me best in my experience, but I had to get here. And so it's a process. I had to get to the point where I said, those things no longer matter. It had to no longer matter to me. Now, I had to decide that it no longer mattered. And this is not to say that I didn't have to release certain energies around the things. This isn't to say that I didn't have to transmute. The transmutation process is looking at the betrayal and looking at what you gained. And I'm going to put big quotes around betrayal because it's you no longer looking at this as a betrayal, but looking at this as how was this situation set up for my learning? In what ways did I contribute to this? And when I say contribute energetically, as we talked about the, um, as we talked about just that energetic resonance, what energies within me are resonating with this frequency? Is there envy? Is there jealousy? Are there things of that nature that are resonating with the frequency of betrayal? Where have I betrayed myself? <laughs> Where am I exhibiting? And, and y'all, you really have to, when you start to do the work in this way, you have to look deeper than the word, right? So let's even take manipulation. People see the word manipulate and they look at it like, I'm going to, I'm going to get over on another person. Manipulation goes deeper than that. There are so many different aspects of manipulation. Manipulation can simply be changing my behavior so that you see me differently. That's manipulation. I'm trying to get you to do something. That's what the word manipulate means. <laughs> it means to mold. And so people look at that and be like, I'm not manipulative. In some way, I promise you that you are. I promise that in some way, shape or form, you are trying to mold the people around you. You're trying to mold your life in a way to where it's controllable for you. So when we look at the implications of our dense bag of emotions, look deeper than just the word. Look at all of the ways that this can be 
um, that this can be playing out inside of your experience. So now the transmutation of that is seeing that, right? So on a, pers on a personal level, in the instances that in the phase of my journey where I was experiencing betrayals after betrayals after betrayals, what I saw within myself was I wasn't someone who would completely show up for other people. I wasn't someone who was operating in my generous bag. I was someone at that time who saw, pe who saw the people in my life as players <laughs> in my life. And so I looked at them as, how do you benefit me? That, that is again, just in all honesty, that's how I looked at people. And so since I was carrying that density, what I attracted to me was the energy of quote unquote betrayal. And I'm gonna call it betrayal, but what I'm really gonna say is people who showed up in my life who really just wanted something from me. I was able to transmute that energy by seeing myself in them, seeing them in me, and then deciding to shed love on the situation for me. Now, I feel like I gotta give this disclaimer. Does that mean that you continue to allow people inside of your experience? No, it does not. It doesn't. Acceptance does not mean tolerance. Just because I saw that within myself did not mean that these were relationships that I was called to keep. It meant that I needed to change and that there was work that needed to be done within me. And so I transmuted that energy by looking at myself, seeing I needed to be more generous I need to be more open. I need to be more accepting. I need to be more compassionate. Um, I infused all of those type of energies into my experience in order to just shift that energy. And then even with the letting go piece, I had to decide it, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter how they showed up. What matters to me is that I feel at peace <laughs> and that I just feel grounded in who I am and what I'm doing. And my happiness is what matters most to me. So truly in emptying that dense bag, if we look at this just from bird's eye view, what you have to decide eventually is that it does not matter what anyone has ever done. Your mind is going to run circles around trying to figure a thing out around trying to find reasons why it had to happen. What were they thinking? I just don't get it. Why would they do that? You will find question after question after question after question after question. You get one question answered, the next one is gonna come. Uh, I was working with someone and I could feel that she was someone who was just very inquisitive about the things that had happened in her past, but it was holding her back because she needed to know. She just needed to know the why. She needed to know why her mother was like this, why this and that. And so uh, we tapped in uh, to spirit and she was called to ask whatever question she had about her past. Just gratefully, I was um, gratefully, I was used as a channel to channel those answers through. But in that she was allowed that space so she could see, do these answers matter to you? These are the answers to your questions. Now, are you ready to let go? <laughs> Does it matter what the answer is? And that's something that you have to ask yourself. This is also, this goes in line with people who seek closure. I get it. I get it. I get it. But in some cases, is that answer going to change the way that you feel about yourself? Truly, that's all that matters. If you were, if you had abusive parents as a child and you have a conversation with your mother, she tells you about her life experiences and her life experiences give you definition as to why she was the way that she was with you. Do you still feel hurt? Does that fully heal you? I'm gonna say nine times out of 10, no, <laughs> no you still have to go within. There is nothing outside of you that's gonna give you the answers that you seek to your healing, nothing. You will spend your entire life searching up, down, left, right for the reasons as to why things feel the way that they do. 
And I'll tell you, I'm gonna give y'all a shortcut. Go inside first. <laughs> Just go inside first. The moment you find yourself seeking the answers outside of you, if there's a part of you that really just needs to do that, sometimes there are parts of us that just need to kind of play the game. It, it truly is a game. They need to play out the role as a seeker. And so if there's a part of you that needs to be the seeker, fine. But understand that it's just doing that. It's just doing that for whatever reason. And you're always going to have to come back in and reconcile within self and ask yourself, does this matter? <laughs> Does this matter? What matters more? Letting this thing run around my mind, run around my body, run around my experience or feeling free. That like that right there, that's the key to letting go. Does this matter to me in the long run? If the answer is yes, again, you just really you just going to have to have some conversations with yourself because why does it matter? <laughs> why does it matter? And I know we talked about this on a previous episode, but this goes along with getting to a space where you decide to release your personal history and release your personal story. This doesn't mean that you forget about everything that's happened. This doesn't mean that you forget about everything that's happened in your life. This doesn't mean that you throw it away, but you start to see it as these are things that have happened and they don't drive who I am. They don't drive who I am and they don't drive who you are unless you say that they do. They definitely don't drive who you're becoming unless you allow it to. And so the releasing of your personal history says, yes, this thing happened when I was 10 years old, but that has no power and authority over who I am today. I decide who I am. <laughs> sure, of course, you, you have a past, yes. Yes, we can't deny the fact that you have a past, but you know, if we look at the way time is, the past is not existing, but you know, whatever. <laughs> just in, um, in just keeping with where we are and not going off on that tangent, you have a history, but your history can remain just as such. It doesn't have to be the thing that dictates who you are. <laughs> and in essence, when we look at this from an even wider perspective, if we continue to pan out, you being here, your body, your being tells the history of eons and lifetimes of existence. And so you were born here with just all of these memories, your skin, your cells, your bodily functions, your connection with nature, all of this stuff tells its own story. But what you are here to do, and especially those of you who, uh, those of you who do ancestral work, who understand ancestral connection and, and have gotten deep into your an ancestral work, what you are here to do is to transcend your personal history. You are here to transcend your genetic history. You're here to transcend your ancestral history. This is creating new genetic code. <laughs> Otherwise, you're living in this cycle where you're repeating the same things you're repeating. You're repeating uh, the stories of 100 years ago. And I'll share another personal story I had um, just a very deep connection with one of my ancestors that I came into contact with who was living in, in living in slave days. And once I connected with him and understood that he had been walking with me my entire life, I connected with his story. I was able to see that his story was my story. The things that he had experienced was my story up into a certain point of my life. And it was at that point in my life where I had to decide, will you decide to be free? Will you just decide that going forth, you're going to be happy. You're going to live your life for you. You're going to look ahead of you and not behind. And it was at that time where he was able to be put to rest. And 
then I had to decide now what, what, what story am I creating? His place in my life was to get me to a certain point to where I would decide to be free. A lot of those lessons happen through pain, through suffering, through whoo, if y'all just whoo, the things, the things, the things, the things that have happened in my life experience. But so many of the lessons um, and the replaying of his story had to be so painful for me because I had to decide I'm not living out anybody else's story but my own. I am not bound to my astrology. I'm not bound to my biology. I'm not bound to the genetic code I've been given. I'm not bound to my family, my parents. And again, I'm not bound to my personal history. Um, at that point, I had to decide that it didn't matter what had happened in the expanse of time <laughs> throughout the history of me being a soul. <laughs> I had to decide it didn't matter what happened. But at this point right now, I'm going to decide that I don't give a damn what happens. I'm going to be happy. And, you know, and that's that. That's how you let go. That's how you fully transmute um, all of that dense bag of energy. And that's how you start to realize and live and breathe and accept that nobody can cause tension, call tension to come into your experience, but you. And you're doing it on so many different levels. <laughs> it's happening on so many levels, but I, I hope that just expanding in it that way gave you all just a better understanding of the level of power that you have, the level of power that you have over your experience. You just, today, I was thinking about how, you know, when people are on the come up, you hear people's come up stories and we call it a come up story, right? They're like, yeah, I was sleeping on the couch. I was homeless. I was in my car. I'm sick of hearing it. Honestly, today I was like, I'm so sick of hearing that. And it's motivational for people, right? Because those are people's actual life experiences. Um, I've got a come up story of my own. But as I said, I don't need that story. <laughs> I don't need the story in order to be who I am. And what I, when I was thinking about it, what I didn't like about that was that I noticed how it implanted in my brain that in order to be truly successful, you gotta have a come up story. <laughs> and what that said, like under that was, in order to receive blessings, you have to have experienced a period of scarcity. I did not like that. I didn't like it. And in that moment, I was like, that's not my story. That's not my story. That's not my story. Because why would I want to experience a period of scarcity? And if I do, then cool. If it happens, then yes. But it's the fact that, that I realized that that was what has been fed into our culture and in our collective in a way. It's like the struggle leads to prosperity. The struggle leads to it. A struggle is a struggle. Cool, yes, fine, okay, cool. If the struggle happens, it happens. But in that moment, I had to tell myself, I don't have to struggle. I don't have to. It doesn't have to be this way. And um, I just felt so many change just breaking free and releasing then the collective story, releasing this archetype of the people who are most successful have struggled the most. Maybe they have, but baby, that's not my story. <laughs> that's not me. Sure, there have been struggles, but I'm just like, I have no desire to claim the struggle bus. And you don't have to. There are so many things you don't have to claim. Things that you have been told are part of the collective, that are part of your history, that are part of our culture, our people as a, uh, melanated peoples <laughs> there are so many things like so many struggle things in that that we just don't have we don't have to we don't have to we decide not to so uh, i'm gonna leave y'all with that on that one <laughs> preferably that sunk in i'm gonna pull a card but so grateful to divine because again y'all as i said in the beginning of this episode we were letting divine lead i have notes but i have not touched these notes 
I'm looking at my notes like, I guess we're not going to talk about you. It's cool. We're going to continue to allow the divine to just uh, flow us through the ending of this final episode of the first season. All right. So this card actually came out the first time. So this was the card. Uh, this suppose this was the message that it wanted. This card is brazen. The goddess is Satira. And what is Satira's guidance? Satira is from the, simp the temple of the warriors. She's a goddess, the goddess of brazenness from Guyana. Her guidance, step up, go for it. Partner with the divine to make brazen choices and everything meant to diminish you will elevate you. All who meant you harm fall away. Your hurdles are illusions because you are plugged into source. Make the brazen decision. What would you dare do if you knew you couldn't fail? It is brazen to be unapologetically you. It is brazen to speak up for someone not in the room, to choose a different spiritual path or career than your community. It is brazen to build your family your way. God and goddess force energy is brazen. And the declaration, I am bold, brave, shameless, and brazen. Uh, that card speaks so much to authenticity, just as we talked about with releasing your personal story, releasing the story of the collective, <laughs> releasing the story of your ancestry, honestly, on, in certain ways, right? Because this is your life, this is your body, this is your experience. And it takes so much courage to hop outside and step into your own experience and say, I'm gonna do this my way. I'm gonna do this in a way that feels good for me, that works for me in a way that feels authentic and true to me. And what I will say is when you start to do this, when you start to embody this energy, of course you're gonna experience pushback. Of course you are. Humans are wired for community. And so when we look at things from a communal aspect, in the community, we're doing the same thing. There is something that's common about this. When you start to truly just let your freak flag fly and step outside of the norm, the community may not love it. The community may not, uh, may not accept it at first because it's like this, they're doing something different. What is this that they're doing? But embodying that brazen energy is allowing yourself to be a change maker, especially within your family units, um, especially within your friend units, understandable that there are legs of the spiritual journey that are so lonely. It feels like there's no one around that understands. But if you are someone that's in that place where you're looking around you and you see that you are the only one that you don't know who to turn to, you don't know who you can talk to, understand that you are placed in the center of that for a reason. It's up to you to be the change maker. I like to, um, I like to speak on this in terms of you are the storm. We think about storms come through, they blow shit down <laughs> and they leave, uh, often they leave a mess. It's cool, but in the cleaning of that mess, it leaves a blank slate of sort for something new to be created. And that's what we're experiencing right now in the collective. We're experiencing this calling for a brazen energy, a calling for those of us who have felt um, outcast, unseen, unheard, um, who have just felt different for the majority of our experiences. The energy right now is calling for us to allow those parts of ourselves that we may have just put in a closet, those parts of yourself that you're not sure about, um, allowing that to come forth because that's what's needed right now. That's what's necessary right now. The energy is asking us to make our realities and make the world anew. Mother Earth is shifting. Her vibration is raising. And it's just calling for something else. It's calling for something different. And so, as I said, for those of you that just may feel lonely, 
You may feel as if no one understands you. No one knows what's going on. You're trying to have spiritual conversation with people and they like, how about them Falcons? <laughs> you know, that's cool. You know, you know, sports, sports is cool. Um, <laughs> but um, understand or um, or I'll say especially because the spirit keeps bringing me back to this, especially those in your family units where you're experiencing where especially your older family members are just not changing where you still they're holding on to these same habits they're still holding on to their pain they're repeating these same patterns um understand that as you shift everything around you will shift again you're the storm you're the change maker you don't have to concern yourself too much with everyone else around you especially those you love you don't have to concern yourself too much with the, with them when you raise your own vibration, when you start to shift, then the things around you can't help but change. And you allow your change to be what inspires those that you love, your community, your family, friends, all of that. You allow your shift to be what inspires them to step more fully into themselves. I say from experience, this might take years. <laughs> For me, it took years. It took my family years to start to come on board and they, they still, you know, we, we rolling, <laughs> we're rolling. There's work, there's still work to be done, but through the embodiment of my own authenticity and through my own journey, I found that I was able to be more compassionate. I was able to hold more patient and understanding space. And so as I started to shift, as I started to allow my changes to be the storm inside of my relationships, I found that I, I became more comfortable inside of the discomfort of the changes. I became more comfortable inside of the changes. And in that, it lent even more space for me to come even more out of my shell, for me to be even more authentic and to embody even more of that brazen energy. So I will leave y'all with that. Find comfort in the discomfort. What's the cliche? Be the change you want to see. <laughs> it's real though. It's real though. You are the change maker. Be the change that you want to see in your family, in, re in your relationships, in your communities. It makes no sense for you to change and for you to judge the people that aren't changing because you know what it's like. You know what it's like to be in a sunken place. You know what it's like for your mind to be there. You know how hard it is. You know the work that you had to do in order to shift. And so you lend them grace. You um, you extend your hand when they're ready, but also understanding you can't make anybody do anything. <laughs> and so when they're ready, open your hand. But if they're not ready, close your mouth <laughs> and just focus, focus on you, focus on yourself, focus on your growth, your and your evolvement. <laughs> there we go. All right, y'all. My mouth is out of words today. And just in closing, giving thanks to just every one that has been with me this entire season. It has been a journey. It's been a journey for me in becoming comfortable with just sitting here talking, honestly, in, um, in the time that I filmed this, I have leaned so much more into my own authenticity and released so much perfectionism and just needing this to be a certain type of way. So if y'all don't like it, I don't care. <laughs> I'm so serious. If you don't like this, I don't care, okay? Tell me how much you don't like it in the comment. Tell me how much you don't like it. I don't care, all right? Um, this was just such a work of love, a work of, um, a work of me allowing myself to be seen, to be witnessed, to be felt, and just so healing in so many different ways. So again, I thank y'all and I will see you next season. Amen. Ashe, namaste.